Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day! Mom, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for all that you do. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mom. My favorite thing about Mom is how yummy the kids. My favorite thing about Mom is to help her play a game. My favorite thing about Mom is her her cookies and the love she gives us. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, mothers. We are going to have some fun. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Thank you, Mother, for helping us see the hard times like when we get scratches. I love you because you brought me into this world. Thank you for caring about how we feel. Happy, Happy Mother's Day. Day. Feliz Dia de la Madre. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Um, you're so nice to us and do everything. Um, work so hard. Thank you so much. Yeah, Mom, we love you. I love you so much. Hey, Mom. Thanks for helping me out with schoolwork every single day. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. Bye. We love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. From your girls, Daddy, and Pipes. Bye. Mama. Say love you. Yeah, yeah. I love my mom because she does things around the house and because she's just really helpful and we do everything together. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thanks for all you do in being a really good teacher. We, we love, love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. Love you. I love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. I love you a ton. Look, it's Ryan. Where's Mama? Mama. Mama. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you for always loving us unconditionally and setting a godly example for us. Love you, Mom. We love you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Good morning. Happy Sunday to everyone and Happy Mother's Day as well. It's great to see our students and the kids in that video that was just shown and seeing them wishing Happy Mother's Day to their mom. We want to tell every one of you Happy Mother's Day as well. And we know that this day is, is a day that for many people has so much joy and so much happiness. We also realize that for some families, this is a difficult day. And so whether this is a day of joy or a day of, of difficulty for you, we hope it's a good day, a day of worship and a day of praise and a day that we glorify our God together. I'm here in our auditorium where we normally are all together on a Sunday morning. This is our youth section where many of our students normally sit. And I've just got to say, it's lonely to be here and to be here without everyone else being here as well. And we look forward to the day that we believe is coming, that we'll be together as one a group of believers again, worshiping God together. But you know, the really good thing is that even though we're not together in one place, we still serve a God who is very much alive and very much in control and very much worthy of our worship. And so while the church does not need a building to worship, we continue to be the church and we continue to be the people of God who love him and love others and proclaim his name to our world. So today as we worship, we invite you to join us and let's spend this time together lifting high the name of Jesus and praising him. Who paints the skies into glorious day? Only the splendor of Jesus Who breathes his life into fists of clay Only the splendor of Jesus Who shapes the valleys and brings the rain Only the splendor of Jesus Who makes the desert to live again Only the splendor of Jesus he is wonderful, He is glorious, clothed in righteousness, full of tenderness. Come and worship Him, He's the Prince of Life. He will cleanse our hearts in His river of fire. Who hears the 
cry of the barren one, only the mercy of Jesus, who breaks the curse of the heart of stone, only the mercy of Jesus, who storms the prison and sets men free, only the mercy of Jesus, purchasing souls for eternity, only the mercy of Jesus. He is wonderful, He is glorious, clothed in righteousness, full of tenderness. Come and worship Him, He's the Prince of Life, He will cleanse our hearts in His river of fire. He is wonderful, He is glorious, clothed in righteousness, full of tenderness. Come and worship Him, He's the Prince of Life, He will cleanse our hearts in His river of fire. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue confess. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow at His name. He is the Wonderful Counselor. He is the Mighty God. He is the Everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue confess. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow at His name. There is no other name. Which we're saying, there is no other name but Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue confess. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow at His name. Every knee shall bow at His name. Every knee shall bow at, at the name, name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Buddy, we sure missed seeing everybody and missing your hugs and hellos. And Mama Miss is going to church. I'm Sandy Light, and this is my mother, Mary McCam. She's also the mother of Meriden Warden, who's taking the video because she did not want to be on camera. Neither did I, period. She wouldn't. She wouldn't go, would she, Mama? No. I asked Mother last night, what's different about this being home with a virus? And she said, nothing really for her. She stays home most of the time anyway, except when we go to church. And she has missed doing that. I asked her this morning, how would she describe her mother? And she said, what'd she say, Meredith? She said she was sweet yeah, and she, accommodating. She was sweet and accommodating. And I said, well, we could say the same thing about you. The other night I asked her, I said, I was telling her how much the four of us appreciated her and everything she's done for all four of us, all of our lives. And I was kind of sad, and I said, I'm really going to miss you when Jesus takes you. And she looked at me, and she said, well, he may take you first. <laughs> we got a big kick out of that, didn't we? <laughs> Mother will be 105 years old this June, and uh, my siblings and I all say that she's probably going to outlive us all. She's healthy as a horse. And she eats three meals a day, no medications, no hospitals. But I told, I tell everybody, it, her secret is she wakes up happy every morning. She loves God and she loves people and it just shows. You're, you're smart. I'm smart. <laughs> yeah, I'm smart about you, that's for sure. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's so happy. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center. Of it all, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. You're the center Everything revolves around you Jesus, you Jesus, be the center of my life Jesus, be the center of my life From beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do Jesus you're the center Center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, oh, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do, Jesus, you're the center, everything revolves around you, Jesus, you, Jesus at the same Well, church, now is the time where we are going to enter into family prayer time. It's time where we get to pray together as our families. And during this sermon series and this season where we're focusing as a church on lament, 
It's an opportunity for us as a church to bring the things to God that are sometimes hard to talk about or hard to think about. We can pray for the injustices that are faced in this world. We can pray for the sicknesses to come to an end. We can pray for the struggles of uncertainty about the future. Guys, lament is something that is so deeply woven throughout Scripture. And it's powerful, especially when we pray these prayers together. So with your family, take some time and pray for um, some of the brokenness in the world uh, together. After our family prayer time will be our time of communion. So perhaps after, towards the end of this time, you can get up and grab your communion supplies and be ready for that. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder. Because nothing has the power to save but your name. Jesus, in your name we pray, come and fill our hearts today. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty. I just got back from a and Consolidated where I work as a teacher and a coach and we were taking up the soccer equipment um, and the first crew to get there were our seniors, our varsity seniors and uh, needless to say it was a very interesting time. Um, I think it's the only time in most of our lives where we can say we didn't finish our school year because a global pandemic struck and uh, my seniors didn't get to finish their senior season. Um, this is indeed a strange time. Life is different for some, difficult for others, and I would argue altogether uncomfortable for most of us. Um, but what has provided me comfort as of late is that we're not called to comfort. Um, we're called to God. So um, I actually had a different plan, and then I got caught up reading Psalms 22 and instantly realized this should be my message for today. Um, so if you want to get out your Bibles and follow along or your phones or whatever, that would be a great idea because we're going to kind of be jumping through Psalms 22 during this communion talk. So starting in Psalms 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted you, and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. And just as this is true for David with the Israelites, it's true for us and all of all of humanity, all of history. Continually we see people cry out to the Lord and he responds faithfully. And especially us as Christians, he responded most faithfully with Jesus Christ. We're going to jump to verse 30. Posterity will serve him and future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Uh, I love verse 30 where it says posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. Because as a history teacher and with all of my history teacher friends, we've been saying it's so strange because this will be put in history textbooks. And future generations will remember the global pandemic of 2018, excuse me, 2019, 2020. And after reading this verse, I just laughed. Because that's okay. Future generations will remember this until it fades out of recent memory. But since time began and until time ends, regardless of what happens, future generations not only will remember the name of the Lord, but they will worship the name of the Lord. So let's go to God in prayer for this communion. Father God, I want to thank you for all the ways that you've blessed us in life. Um, I know that some have been more blessed than others in recent history. But I just pray that through the good and the bad, we see that you are disciplining us and and molding our spirits for eternity with you. I pray that we're continually able to see the blessings that you offer us. And uh, sometimes it kind of seems like in the darkest times, that's where your light shines the brightest. Um, I pray that our faith is not in physical capabilities or situations, but that uh, ultimately we understand that Remaining faithful to you is is really the only thing we're called to. We're not called to live a comfortable life. We're not called to be able to go to work every day. We're not called to get free time from our family when they frustrate us sometimes. But we're called to love you, God, and we're called to love those around us as you have. And I pray that as we take this bread, that your son's body, Jesus Christ's body, is a continual reminder of that love both in trials, tribulations, but also in the times where we feel blessed. So we thank you for the sacrifice, Lord, and we pray that um, if nothing else, we're able to distribute it to those around us. We thank you, Lord, and we thank you, Jesus. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of man? Oh, you rescue the souls of man. Counselor, Right, and um, let's continue in our communion time by praying for the cup. 
Father God, I thank you for the hope that Jesus Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection afford us. Um, I can't imagine a reality in which we go through trials without the hope of eternity with a, an ever-present, ever-loving God. I thank you that you're present in the good times, um, but I also thank you that you're present in the bad times. Um, I know it's a little bit harder to see through the darkest periods of our lives, but I pray that um, our eyes and our spirits remain open to seeing your presence and that we can share that presence with those around us. Uh, once again, we can't stop thanking you for Jesus Christ. And whether it be talking about Psalms 22 and talking about how you're ever faithfulness, or, or whether it be reading anything in the gospel or, or even the Old Testament and seeing it point back to Jesus Christ. I just pray that above anything else, you continually, continually show us ways that point us towards the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, I thank you for this cup. I thank you for the symbolism that his blood provides as it ran down that cross. And I thank you once again for the eternal hope of salvation that it provides us. We continually strive to love you more every day, God. And we thank you for the example that Jesus Christ was. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, howdy A&M Church of Christ and our many guests who are joining us via the Internet this morning. Thanks so much for being here. You know, we may not be together physically, but we're very much together spiritually, and that makes all the difference. I want to begin this morning by wishing all our moms a very happy Mother's Day. I know that I am super grateful for my mom, Audrey. Here's a picture of us uh, from just a few miles away uh, from where I grew up. Uh, several of you may have lost moms this past year or in recent years, and so today might be a little more difficult for you. Uh, please know that we love you and that we're thinking about you today. This morning, we continue our sermon series entitled Rescue, and we're focusing on the purpose and power of lament. Last week, we looked at Psalm 88, the darkest of the lament songs. Today, we look at Psalm 34, one of those psalms that showcases what's possible on the other side of lament. So let's begin by setting the context for this psalm of David. Psalm 34 is an acrostic poem. So in this case, each verse, with two exceptions, begins with successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. It is a Psalm of David. When he pretended to be insane before King Abimelech. I'm sorry, what was that? David, the man who was about to be crowned King of Israel, pretended to be insane. Well, in order to understand Psalm 34, we need to understand the story behind it. So let's take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 21, beginning at verse 10. That day, David fled from Saul and went to Achish, king of Gath. But the servants of Achish said to him, Isn't this David, the king of the land? Isn't he the one they sing about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. David took these words to heart 
and was very much afraid of Achish, king of Gath. And so he pretended to be insane in their presence. And while he was in their hands, he acted like a madman, making marks on the doors of the gate and letting saliva run down his beard. Achish said to his servants, look at this man. He's insane. Why bring him to me? Am I so short of madmen that you have to bring this fellow here to carry on like this in front of me? Must this man come into my house? Well, if we keep reading, we would find in the next chapter that David and his men ultimately leave King Achish and flee to the cave of Adullam. Now, some scholars believe that he, along with some 400 men, may have spent anywhere from three to six months here, most likely in several caves in the area. And it's highly likely that while lodging at one of the caves of Adullam, that David, who had just escaped the jealousy and rage of King Saul, who had just said goodbye to his best friend Jonathan, who had just escaped from the king of Gath, it's very likely that David, who is now in a place he never expected to be, writes the following words. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you, his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, But the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Well, I wish we could sit together and simply read this psalm over and over again in community. Because you see, just like David, we find ourselves in a place where we never expected to be. Could any of us have imagined even a few months ago that we would be fleeing from a common enemy, separated from many of those we love, and living in less than ideal conditions with so many rhythms of life disrupted? Now, I think David could really relate. He had already been chosen by God to be Israel's next king. He had been appointed by Samuel as God's chosen leader of his people. You see, the favor of God was on David. David had killed the giant. He was a hero in the eyes of God's people. His future was determined. His goals were obvious. His path was straight. David was on his way. But then life began to unravel. Saul's jealousy reared its head. It escalated to the point that David's life was in jeopardy. If he stays close to Saul, 
David's going to die. And so the young man who was on track to be welcomed as king, he's now on the run. Almost every expectation David has at this point is broken. So at this critical point in his life, a time when David could have blamed God, a time when he could have thrown his hands up in the air and said, you know, this just isn't fair. When he could have stayed in those caves for many more months or possibly even years, a man for whom almost nothing worked out like he hoped. At this critical point in his life, David worships God. And we don't have time today to review every verse of Psalm 34. But I do want to focus on a few key elements, a few verses, and a couple of phrases from this powerful psalm written during a time when life was very uncertain, but when faith in God was not. It took time and effort for David to put this psalm together. Now, making a mistake here, surely the Holy Spirit's at work, but David is not a, a puppet with the Holy Spirit's hand simply pulling the, the strings. God works through David's gifts and through his talents and through his circumstances, and he allows David an opportunity to process what's going on around him and then to respond and worship to God. It's not easy to create the very complex acrostic structure that David constructs in Psalm 34, but it's in the wrestling that David gets stronger. And I think there's a really valuable lesson for us here. As we reflect on what's going on around us, to what action is the Holy Spirit prompting us? Are we listening? And more importantly, are we responding? Psalm 34 is a psalm of worship. It's meant to be shared and experienced with others. In verse 3, David writes, Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So when on the run, David chooses to not go it alone. Actually, a little later in his life, when David is by himself, he's going to make decisions that cause tremendous pain and suffering. And so the truth is, there is power in community worship. And I can't wait to get back to it as we gather in the not too distant future in Jesus' name. There are so many key verses in this psalm to choose from. Time doesn't allow, as I said earlier, for us to examine all of them. But I do want to focus on a handful that I find especially meaningful when I consider our response to broken expectations. Psalm 34, verses 8 and 9, David writes, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. I want us just to pause for a moment and let that phrase, blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Let's let that soak in for just a few seconds. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. We're going to see this phrase again in verse 22. But in that instance, David is not just talking about the blessings that occur in God's refuge. He takes it a step further and expands on the idea that there is not even any condemnation for those who put their trust in God. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. On this text, Gerald Wilson notes, we too often identify divine blessings with getting the goods. 
in one way or another how blessed we think is the one who is financially secure or well-respected or whose family is well-balanced and happily trouble-free. We thank God for the blessings of health, comfortable living, and even national security. In doing so, we rightly acknowledge how much all aspects of our lives depend on God. The trouble is, is that we may come to associate divine blessings exclusively with such external evidence. I think that's why David ends the psalm with a greater focus on how God's love is ultimately manifested. Not simply in saving David from danger, but ultimately delivering him from every danger, every struggle, and every broken expectation. A few key phrases. The first from verse 1. David writes, I will bless the Lord at all times. This is no matter what language. It's our testimony, even in the greatest of trials. It is, as my friend Dan Warden notes, a hallelujah anyway. What a wonderful heart posture to consider, even in the middle of of multiple broken expectations. In verse 8, David writes, Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is not a, a sampling to see which flavor suits you best. The idea here is to savor. That's something that can't happen in an instant. This is about drinking deeply from the well of God's goodness. Many years later, the Apostle Peter would write these words, showcase how savoring God, tasting God, his goodness, actually contributes to our maturity as believers. Peter writes, therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it, you may grow in respect to salvation if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. David will also write in verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And indeed he is. And it's so important to remind ourselves of this truth, especially when we find ourselves in places we never expected to be. I challenge you to revisit this psalm intentionally and often over the next several days and weeks. Read it silently. Read it out loud. Sing it. Pray it. Share it. For no one is condemned who takes refuge in him. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds His saints. He will deliver them. He will deliver them.
Hey, we want to say thank you to Greg for sharing those words with us from the book of Psalms. Such a great book and so much information there about God's incredible love for us. And specifically, as we look at God's faithfulness during these times of uncertainty and these times of difficulty. I know so many of you have been so generous through these past few weeks, and we thank you for that. If you still are looking for a way to give, then these options are available to you that you can give, and you'll see those on the screen right now. Any of those methods are great ways for you to give. We will do our best as a church to continue serving God in the best way that we can and to help other people as they have needs here in our community. David Haley is one of our shepherds. He's going to close us out with a prayer at this time. And then if you want to, leave the video running. There's going to be some songs that are going to come on that will just play and continue just to have uh, words lifting up the name of God in your home today. Again, thanks for being with us. Good morning, church. I'm David Haley, one of the shepherds at the NM Church of Christ. For my shepherd's blessing today, I'd like to focus on our mission statement, Find Hope and Live with Purpose. I know this pandemic has affected all of us in many ways, and it is hard not to lose our focus. In thinking about our shelter in place, it caused me to think about Joan and his shelter in place. Three days and three nights in the belly of a fish. Not something I'd like to experience, but like us, Jonah didn't get much of a choice. But God kept him safe, and Jonah did make it through. In reading Jonah, I realized how easy it is to lose purpose, even for a prophet. After getting all the people of Nineveh to change their ways, Jonah became more concerned about a plant than the 120,000 lives he was able to save. Purpose. If Jonah was able to lose his purpose, so can we. I think this pandemic has helped many of us focus on hope and redirect our purpose. And I pray that we all are able to find hope and live with purpose. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, please allow us to always find time to find hope and live with purpose. Help us not to worry about the plants in our lives but to focus on the souls we touch each day. Focus us on the ultimate goal to spend eternity with you and influence as many souls as we can along the way. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your Son that provided a path to salvation and your avenue of prayer in which we can bring life's events before you. In closing again, I pray that we find hope, and live with purpose, and that our lives, that we always put you as the centerpiece of our lives. In Christ's name, amen. Lord, those who pass by, even averted their gaze from the side, such was the suffering you bore. Mom, thanks for everything you do for us. Happy Mother's Day. Love, love you. Thank, Thank you for being the best mommy in the world. We love you so much. Hi, Mom. I hope you had a good Mother's Day. I love you a whole lot. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, and I'm glad for everything that you did for us. I just want to say to all the mothers, thank you so much for giving your children hope and love they need. Okay. I just want to say thank you for spending time with your children during these past few months that of the coronavirus. Thank you so much for, for just having love for your children. What do you guys love most about mom? I love most about mom when she cleans our house and makes us food. I love mom when she makes us food. Happy Mother's Day. You are so loved and appreciated. Thank you for all you do. I love you. Happy, Happy 
Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you for everything. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. We love you so much. And we oh, we just love you. Love you, Mom. Love you. Happy birthday and good night. Anyways. Hand in mine. 
season by season, I watch him amazed in all of the mystery of his perfect ways. All I have need of, his hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me. I can't remember a trial or a pain did not recycle to bring me gain. I can't remember one single regret in serving God only and trusting His hand. All I have need of his hand will provide. He's always been faithful to me. This is my anthem. This is my song. The theme of the stories I've heard for so long. His loving compassion, it knows no end. All I have need of, His hand will provide. He's always been faithful. He's always been faithful. a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail 
There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won Before my God 